Hello, thank you for checking out my uh, YouTube video today and my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, um, this is mostly dedicated to my 8088 projects um, and anything that's kind of related or I find interesting that's kind of related. Anyway, today's video, I want to talk about this uh, PC on a card that I created. So kind of what I wanted to do here is I wanted the most simplest version of a PC that I could build. Uh, somewhat for cost, somewhat just to see if it could be done. No real like dedicated purpose here, just kind of because. So right here we've got uh, the V40 processor and use this because it's got a built-in interrupt controller and system timer. Right there uh, combines in three chips. Uh, also your uh, clock is combined in as well. And your um, I.O. and memory rewrite lines are combined in there. So it actually eliminates quite a few chips. Um, I did put a clock on here, but this one is uh, for the system timer and the PC speaker. I had considered uh, trying to get rid of it, and I did a few jumper wires to work with it. And it's doable, but your speaker's all weird. And it's kind of nice to have that, that official uh, frequency that they had that uh, it's like 1.19 megahertz going into that uh, tick pin. So, um, obviously got the PC speaker here. Uh, and then I've got my address latches in here and data transceiver. Uh, 512K of RAM, uh, 64K of ROM. Uh, this is a probably like a 256K or something like that. I'm just using the bottom 64k in the chip um, anything that's pin compatible with this uh, could be plugged in there so it's kind of universal um, up across the top here i've got my decoding for my memory and ios and then so starting from about here over i get a little creative so right here i have got 16k of dual port memory and this just happens to be sitting where uh, color graphics adapter uh, memory would be sitting. So it doesn't have a video generator, but it has the memory. And that's kind of key. I used an 8255, and this is at port 60, for the keyboard controller. And it has interrupt capabilities to the processor. And then over here, I've got some additional decoding and some latches to talk to the other side of the dual port memory. So what this is, this is not an ISA host, this is an ISA client. So this sits at, um, I listed it out here, uh, address uh, four, uh, zero, and then you've got uh, uh, 2F, so what is that, 256 um, of address space coming from your ISA bus. Like I said, this is not host out, it talks in. So this plugs into an existing computer. And what the computer can do is read the video memory and display it onto the screen. And then it can also write to port A on your 8255 and send scan codes for keyboard inputs. So pretty fancy. It, uh, it basically boots up. It, it, I reprogrammed the uh, BIOS. It was kind of getting hung up. I was looking for the um, kind of the ready command on the CGA card and just sit there and, and wait. And so I kind of took that out of the BIOS. So it thinks it's got a, well, it sort of thinks it's got a CGA card installed and it reads and writes to the video memory the processor does. And then your second computer can come in and read from this side and display it. Uh, boots from the USB here. This is my USB module. Uh, the other, the factory module will fit, but this one is measured up for this. Um, I had a little bit of space left on the board when I was done. Uh, like I said, it is to reduce cost, but it's kind of an isolated system. The only thing you can do is view the memory and set scan codes. That's it. You can't send anything else through the ISA bus at this time. Create some problems. I'll show the demo here in a minute. Um, say you change video modes. There's no way for this to tell the host PC that it's changed video modes. 
So I thought about putting a second dual port uh, memory on there that sits in the BIOS data area, but it would require quite a bit more chips uh, to communicate and it just seemed a little excessive. So I'll show in the code what I did was you select the mode. You can change modes while it's operating. Um, so anyway, I had some extra space and I made, I didn't solder these on because this is a prototype, these little mini slots. So if you wanted to run this standalone, I've got two slots here and here. And uh, over here, I didn't solder them in either. There's jumpers and this is a slot zero and slot one. This is slot zero, slot one. So you can select which interrupt and you can select the upper eight bits of the IO address um, between 02, 03, 04 to the slot. And the slot then has address zero through seven and data zero through seven. IO read, IO write, and interrupt, and chip select, and then power. Uh, really, it's kind of mapped, I meant for a parallel port or a serial port mostly, but. Uh, you could do whatever there. A reset button on the end here. This will take a, the face plate. I don't have one made. I got to drill some holes in it for the uh, USB and the uh, reset button there. And then I have a USB B on here. And if you'll see, it'll say power only. And so that's how you could run this standalone. Um, so this will plug into an ISA slot on a regular PC. But I also created an ISA slot for a Raspberry Pi, and this works as well. I haven't wrote a lot of code for this. The only thing I've done so far is uh, send some scan codes to verify that it works, and it works. I already had to make some modifications. I added a resistor, but um, the way this works, though, is it only communicates on address 0 through 7 on the ISA bus. Um, and use these dip switches to select the other address lines that you, uh, so it's kind of like locked in. You can't read memory with this particular uh, socket, but you can read an I.O. board. Uh, it's very limited. Uh, it does go to three volts for the inputs, uh, five volts out. Um, so anyway, and then I'll talk about, so it's kind of where this header comes in. Let's see if we can zoom in and stay focused. So what I have here is a two by 20 header and it actually lines up with the pins down here on the ISA as well. So anything that can communicate eight bit address, eight bit data, read, write can communicate to this. So you could use a Raspberry Pi, you could use a propeller, you could use um, an Arduino can communicate to this. And of course the, uh, keyboard controller. And even though it's two by 20, it's actually only one by 20 needed. If you look, you might be able to see that. It's just a flipped version. So across the top, it starts with ground, right, AO, zero, whatever. And across the bottom, it goes opposite. And I kind of did that for one for kind of some redundancy to keep the uh, communication strong if you use this pin header, but also so you don't have to worry about which way to plug it in. You can flip it over. I made a, so I went with the Raspberry Pi uh, ISA slot, but I made a, I don't have it on my desk right here. I can't see it. There's a Raspberry Pi just ribbon cable. This is not Raspberry Pi pin header, but an adapter that goes to the Raspberry Pi and then a ribbon cable into there as well. So this may or may not be needed at a later time. Uh, it may just be ISA, but really, actually, where I want to go with this is, should have had this out beforehand, right here, PCI Express. So this is, a, oh, I think it's a CH367 PCI Express, and it goes to an 8-bit address and an 8-bit data, this is not pin match. You have to use just individual wires, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you'd have to put this in this way because they face other ways. You can plug it in right now, and it will plug into PCI Express 
So you would have uh, an 8088 class PC running inside of your PC. Now the idea obviously would be to combine these one day into one board, uh, obviously be over at this end, but into one board so that it's just a single PCI Express that plugs into your PC. And that CH367 uh, seems to be pretty easy to communicate with. Anyway, uh, I'm going to show a demo on this. So I just happen to have my homemade 8088 over here. And uh, we're going to plug it in and demo it out. So obviously this doesn't do you any good because you're running it in the same type of machine as you're running. So really nothing to gain there. Let's see if we can get this screen in focus. All right. So this is the host PC right here. focused. All right, so this is the host PC. Uh, memory, you can see that it's got 640K. It's the host PC. I'm going to run a program called PC. It starts in text mode. And you can see, big giveaway is the cursor's up in the corner. I need to just turn that off. Like I said, there is no way to read the BIOS data area on the client PC to see where the cursor position is supposed to be. So this is just broadcasting right into the video memory on the PC on a card. And the host PC is just reading that memory and putting it on the screen. Um, so just type mem. And you can see 512K. So it's a different PC. Um, MSD works. I tried uh, check it. Uh, check it didn't like this for some reason. I don't know if it's a video mode issue or what. Anyway, but you can see on here, it says it's a NEC V20, NEC V30, uh, 512K, uh, no network, no home mouse, no video. Uh, it thinks it's got an ABC drive. I, I need to get rid of the AB and the um, COM port zero, LPT zero. So it's pretty stripped down. Um, so what I did though, Let's say you want to run a game. Let's go. Now, your video mode's all screwed up. So if you press F8, it's going to scroll through the modes. F8's up, F7's down. So now we're in graphics mode. So we're in like mode, I think it's a uh, four. And You can see it works. You see that little flicker on the screen? That's just because when it's reading the video memory from the client PC, it's not super fast. I mean, it's fast, but not that fast. And that's just kind of a blip. Also, uh, on graphics mode on a CGA, it's interlaced. And so you're getting, that's why you're getting kind of the, the lines on there as well. But uh, graphics mode's fine. It, uh, I mean, it's usable. There is no delay in the client PC because of this. It's just a uh, screen uh, that you see. So F7 will take us down to a text mode. Um, now, it's not changing the text mode on the client. It's just changing the viewer. So keep that in mind. So we can go down to like uh, a different size of text mode. and But it, the client PC doesn't know that. So it's going to like be off the end or wrap weird. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the, how it works and it worked the same way on the Raspberry Pi. You just create a viewer, um, that views, um, like I said, I, I kind of wouldn't mind having the ability to read the BIOS data area to detect the, uh, mode, but it's, it's just that many more chips. So it doesn't, it just doesn't seem worth adding when you can just do it manually. Uh, anyway, F10 will exit. So we're back to the host PC here. It just goes back, uh, it resets into graph or text mode for the host PC. And you can actually just jump right back in. Um, 
we're right back in where we left off. So anyway, just kind of thought it was a neat little toy and thought I'd demo it today. So thanks for checking it out. Uh, feel free to check out my other videos and send me uh, email if you have any questions. Thanks.